Welcome to Truckee Talks. I'm your host, Maya Schneider. And on today's show, I'm bringing somebody I met a number of years ago and very glad to finally get in front of the camera, Linda Carell. Linda, it's nice to have you here on the show. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. I'm tempted to introduce you as the founder of Tahoe Singles Connection, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But really, you've had such a rich life and such a varied career that I want to talk about that. So let's start at the beginning. Where are you from originally? I grew up in a place called Long Beach, Long Island, on the other, um, by the Atlantic Ocean, and um, and how long were you there? I lived there through my uh, through uh, college, and then I went to Buffalo State University, and then I went on to dramatic school. Now, you mentioned uh, earlier when you and I were talking that your childhood wasn't typical and that dolls weren't really what you were attracted to. What were you attracted to? That's very true. I, I, I was never a person that liked to play with dolls. I, I was more, um, I liked to do improvisations with my friends. And, and, then, and that's what got me interested in theater. So the dramatic arts always had a pull for you? It always did. I mean, every time I saw a movie, I would I would run home and dance and sing in front of the uh, mirror. So now one of my experiences of people that, from New York is that they know every single song to every single <laughs> musical ever written. Is that you? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might uh, call on you later on to give us some uh, some songs or at least a few clips. But you've performed professionally. Yes, I have. As a singer. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, I I had. Uh, when I was uh, about eight years old, <laughs> I remember one day I went to public school, and I heard that this girl, her name was Betty Christopher, and she wore pigtails, and I, saw, and I heard that she took voice lessons. And I have to tell you, I, it was like bells going off, and ever since then I have wanted to sing, and then I studied singing, and then I actually did theater, and I did a lot of theater. So tell me about that. You worked professionally off-Broadway, on-Broadway? Off-Broadway, on-Broadway, off-off-Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it at touring companies. I bet that was exciting. I bet that was thrilling. Where did you go to school for this? You mentioned that you uh, were trained. I went to the Neighborhood Playhouse Dramatic School in New York. And uh, oh, there see, it came out like New York. <laughs> <laughs> now you know where I'm from. <laughs> It's a dead giveaway. It, that there was are the giveaway. a few of you here in Truckee, a there few are. expatriates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I, I did quite a bit of theater. And as I was doing it, my voice developed. And, and it developed into an operatic voice. So I um, remember I was doing this play called Peony by Pearl S. Buck. And I was playing the role of Peony. Peony. She was a Chinese girl. And I, um, I loved doing the play. In fact, she came to see it. That was when she was alive. How exciting was that? It was a thrill. I'll bet it was. Were you nervous? No, I just wanted to do really well for her. Yeah. And um, she came with all her Eurasian children. And what surprised me about her was that when you read The Good Earth, it's so down to earth. The writing, but actually she was very sophisticated. So that surprised me. That's interesting. So she wrote for an audience, and she was sophisticated it enough to be able to do that. Absolutely. And this was the only play that she has ever written. So how did you do with Pearl S. Buck in the audience? It was fine. It was fine. Um, I remember it was very cold at night. It was in, it was in Forestburg, New York, mm. and I was always pouring tea. And it was hard to keep your hands from rattling because it was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the, the chatter That's right. Of the, I was uh, always pouring tea. <laughs> Now, after that, you, you said you developed into an operatic voice, but then you went abroad. You took your voice traveling. Well, what had happened when I had studied uh, with, uh, when I had done this play with Pearl S. Buck, um, 
I realized it was a really, it was a moment where I realized I loved the theater, but I missed singing. And that was, uh, so that's when I went to uh, Europe and I studied for seven years. Now let's get some detail on that. Where in Europe were you and who did you study under and what sorts of experiences <coughs> did you have while you were there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that's a long about answer. three it's minutes, okay. right? Yes. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> um, I actually spent four years in Vienna, mm. two years in Italy, and a year in France. And I studied with, I studied with a man called Luigi Ricci, who Good taught Irish name. <laughs> yeah, and he learned the roles of Puccini from Puccini. So he played the rehearsals for Madame Butterfly. He was very old at the time and that was such a thrill because he you know just about all the singers of the century have passed through his door now my my when i imagine what a, a trainer in the theater arts especially somebody of that distinguished a career mm -hmm. when i imagine what that classroom environment would be like i don't think it would be very pleasant was that fun did you have some leeway artistically this was one on one i studied with him seven days a week and we were terrific so what did you want to do with that well, I actually did quite a bit of opera after that. What, what sort of opera did you sing? What was your level? Were you mezzo-soprano? Soprano. Soprano. I uh, think mm. and Butterfly, uh, Barbara of Seville, Faust. How? Yeah. What an amazing life. Thank you. And, and it's just beginning in, in some other aspects, and we'll talk about mm -hmm. that in a minute because you're embarking on some new things. Mm -hmm. Now, when you got to Europe, you, you traveled in different countries, but your only English or your only language was English. That's right. And you had to learn to sing. And I learned all the languages because when I got off the first, I remember when I first arrived in Vienna, I couldn't say anything. And um, now I speak the languages. So what it taught me, I mean, it just made the world just so comfortable for me. A smaller place, I would yes. imagine. And you see that everybody, you know, everybody has feelings. We're all human. Yeah. And that was, that was the good experience of it all. Now, if you learn to sing in a different language, when you try to speak it, do you find yourself singing? Or, or were you OK just translating the singing word into the spoken word? Um, you know, for me, it, uh, I, I think in the languages. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was OK, except for one thing that happened. <laughs> I once had an audition for a company. And I had sung, and I passed the first audition, and then they asked me to come to the theater and uh, to uh, sing a second audition. And that's how, you know, you get hired. And in the meantime, I got the German measles. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. And they asked me to sing um, Carmen, which is a German, which is a French opera right. in German for them, which I learned <sighs> in the dark. So uh, one has one's experiences. <laughs> You mentioned also uh, in some of your notes to me, you took classes with Nadia Boulanger. Ba uh, Boulanger, yes. Uh, and and tell, tell me about her and tell me some of the wisdom that she passed on to you. She was the great grand dame of music. Mm. She really was. She, I think most of the great conductors and composers of this century have, have really worked with her, uh, including Stravinsky mm. and um, uh, foray and she taught most of the uh, conductors that are that are great today and um, she was always saying courage courage mm -hmm. and uh, she was uh, she would always say uh, there are no problems there are only solutions to problems and I think that a little bit of that has infiltrated into my being well in reading some of your notes it seems like Practically everything you've done has enriched you in some way, where some of us sort of skip through our experiences and don't realize until much later on mm -hmm. that they may have impacted us. You mentioned one instructor that you had, Eugenie Lud Ludwig? Eugenie Ludwig. Oh, I was, was going to massacre Ludwig. that name. No. Tell, tell me about your experience with her. Um, she meant a lot to my life because she believed in me. And I think if we can find someone that believes in us, that's huge. Yeah. And uh, what I felt about her was, I, I mean, sh I learned technique from her, but I also learned from her being. And I remember one time, I, I, used, to, uh, I, I used to like to bring her flowers from time mm -hmm. to time because I thought she was wonderful. And so her daughter was one of the great singers of the Vienna Opera, uh, Christa Ludwig. And so their house was always flooded with flowers. And one time, I, I remember I brought her a bouquet of flowers, and one of the, one of the, um, one of the uh, flowers fell off the stem. Mm. 
and here's this house just with flowers all over it. And she put my bouquet in a vase, and she took this little flower, and she put it in a dish. And that was the most special moment, and I hold that with me to this day, that nothing was too small for her, that yeah. everything had meaning. And I love that way of thinking. Well, you've translated that way of thinking into the next phase of your life. You're, you're taking some big steps right now. And right. Before, we, before we talk about that, let's talk a little bit about how you got from all of that rich and, and theatrical background to Trekkie. <laughs> Well, I'm a hiker and a camper. <laughs> and an opera singer. <laughs> and an opera singer, but... Uh, <laughs> it's a great combination. <laughs> yeah. I, I do, and I sometimes sing in the woods out Well, I was going to say, if you go, get a good rendition of Faust going, and the bears oh. will all go in the other direction, you, you'll, you'll be fine. It, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I... Um, I, I always, I've gone to a lot of the uh, national parks. In fact, I think I've hiked almost every na major trail in almost every national park in the north and the southwest and into Canada. That's an accomplishment in itself. Yeah, I love the national parks. So for me, this is my natural habitat. And I, I've always wanted to live like this. And I, I like, I like Truckee. I like the, uh, I like small town living. Well, let's, let's move up a step then. You've been in Truckee for how many years? Four years. Four years. Four, four and a half. Uh, Tahoe Singles Connection has been around almost that long, so you must have founded it practically I, when you walked in the door. I, I, about a half a year after I lived here, I, I remember I was invited to uh, a dinner party, and um, there were four couples and me. They were all married. <laughs> And me, and that was all very nice, mm -hmm. but then I thought, you know, it would be nice <laughs> if I could expand and meet some singles. And then I looked around and I saw that I didn't see any way that I could meet singles. Right. I don't happen to drink, so I, you know, I don't go to bars or anything well, like that. Well, even the bar scene, I can guarantee you, is not a good place to find <laughs> singles. <laughs> it is a good place to find interesting conversation, but mm -hmm. that, that's about all that is. Yeah. So I, I had this idea. And I put it together, and I have a little history of, of starting things. So I, um, I put up, I, I put, put ads in all the newspapers, put up posters all over, and lo and behold, 40 people came. And that was amazing, and it just grew ever since then. Well, four years later, you boast 500 members. Over 500 people. The last time we put out a newsletter, it was just absolutely amazing. And that really is an accomplishment to be proud of. And a lot of this, I know that you've had people recently help you with this, but you really did put this together by your own blood, sweat, and tears. I remember the first few years getting flyers from you, and you would answer the phone, and you would do the mailing, and you would be out there organizing events. And that's, that's a lot of work. I think I started this naively, not knowing that it would <laughs> oh, this grow will be simple. <laughs> that this big. And what? And I had never started a club before. I, I did start a uh, uh, creative art. I did put together a creative arts program with people with developmental disabilities. Mm. So I have that kind of history, which I, I particularly love. That population. Yeah. I have a real heart space, and um, I. Uh, but I had to learn as I did it. And as, as I came to do it, you know, then more and more people in the club got involved. And so now we have quite a few people helping out. That's great. Yeah, it's great. And Tahoe Singles Connection is a way to meet people. You organize events, you make it safe for people to come and meet other people, meet other people for friendships as well as That's potential right. romances. You know, so many people's lives have changed having met at the Tahoe Singles. Mm -hmm. It's been absolutely amazing. Whether it's in friendship, we have people that have gotten married. Ah. We have couples <laughs> that have formed. And um, the people that, you know, new people that come are not going to see are those that have really connected as couples. So I think that's been very gratifying because in this club, I think um, mo most of the people are divorced. You know, mm -hmm. some people ha are single also, and um, it's hard after uh, you know a long relationship. How do you move on and move forward? Mm -hmm. And this has really changed people's lives. Yeah, I think in in some ways we see a population of people that move here to run away from 
events, mm -hmm. divorces, what have you, and, and at some point they, they find themselves needing to regroup, and that's a great place to be able to do it. Now, you have an upcoming event uh, with the Tahoe Singles Connection? We do. Uh, we have uh, this Sunday night. And we'll talk about the date for that, because this uh, show will be airing a few different times. Oh, terrific. Um, so Sunday, April 13th. 14th. 14th, thank you. <laughs> this Sunday night, April 14th, we're going to have a potluck meeting. It's from 5 to 9 p.m. at the North Tahoe Conference Center in Kings Beach, next to Jason's Restaurant. And for information, you can call 530-587-2242. And again, that's a potluck, so bring a dish to share with people. I, this is going to be a light potluck, so either an appetizer, a dessert, or something to drink. A <laughs> light potluck. That's my Appetizers and dessert are my favorite kind of meals. Why have the stuff in the middle when you can just have the two uh, best parts of it? All right, so you formed Tahoe Singles Connection. You've had this rich theatrical life, and now you're transitioning. Tell me about this. I have. Um, actually, I went back to school. I hadn't finished. I was a bit of a rebel. I, went on, I had three years before and then went to dramatic school. So I had always wanted to finish. I went to Sonoma State four years, majored in psychology, then went to JFK University. And uh, this past year, I practiced. It was my, as a, my first year as an intern. Um, practicing as a therapist and I saw that I love the work. That's that's a good thing after spending as much time in school for it you really have to you have to love it to do that kind of you work. You know, I yes. What what is it about the the therapy work that you enjoy? Uh, my special emphasis is on building self-esteem. I have given seven workshops in this area on building self-esteem and I I've noticed if you can help people feel good about themselves and help them through, um, boy, it makes a difference in their lives. And just, and just, you know, wh what I saw with all my clients mm -hmm. is that the deepest need f f across the board is just really being seen and heard and be valued. Well, much like your instructor in Europe, somebody who valued you. Exactly. And you're able to pass that on. Do you think you were born with that, or do you think that you got that through your experiences with these different instructors that you had? Um, you know, I think I got it from my first babysitter. <laughs> now, this is a story we need to hear. I know. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> tell you about that. I had this great babysitter that just lit up my life. Her name was Mrs. Ritter, and she had performed in the Ziegfeld Follies. Oh. So she was it. a performer. Do you love it. I loved it. And I remember, and, and I, I came to realize when I was older that she must have been very, very poor, but I didn't know it at the time because she radiated such joy. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, she, she was a clown. In, in the Ziegfeld Follies, she and her husband, and they d did that from, from when she was 18 to 21, and then her husband got sick, and the rest of her life, she took care of her George. And here's a woman, th uh, you know, that had such meager circumstances. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time I, there was a newspaper article, and there was a little boy who had, uh, who had, I guess his pigeons, somebody took his pigeons, so with her circumstances, she sent him $2 just from the newspaper. Oh. And that made such an impression on my life. Compassion. Compassion. Yeah. And just, you know, reaching out and caring. Well, and that's been your legacy too, Linda. I mean, you, you, you came to Truckee and right away saw a need, just not for yourself, right. but for the community. And, and to have grown the Tahoe Singles Connection into as viable and as healthy and as, as an organization as it is, serving people in this community who otherwise might not ever connect or, or meet, I, I, that's a wonderful gift. Well, one of the things I'm happiest about uh, with the Tahoe Singles, we have a Filling Needs of the Community project. Yeah, tell us about that. And um, so every time we've had an event, we pool $2 a person, and we've bought things of need for different nonprofit organizations. And that has absolutely been a thrill. I remember a couple of uh, seasons ago, in, in December, um, I remember uh, we, we've, one of the places we, com we have contributed to is Project Manor. Mm. And so I had the, the idea, drive. the food right. drive. Right. So I had an idea, you know, I bet they need other things besides food. <laughs> you know, right. so w we, uh, we asked them for their wish list and we're able to get them everything on their wish list, you know, and that was such a thrill. Just by using the resources 
of, of the people within your group? Um, well, they gave uh, the project manager gave us the wish list, and then from the group, from what we pulled together, right. we could do you it. You were able to yeah. fill that list. What a great thing! That so was you've incorporated a sort of philanthropy into this absolutely, group. and that's I think it's lifted the club to a higher purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, so let's talk about where Tahoe Singles is going. You, you mentioned to me a little while ago that you're looking to pass the mantle on. You've got other things right. that you're going to move on to. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? What's, right. what's in the future for Tahoe Singles I've, I've Connection? I've just started being a foster parent as well. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> to add one more thing Life to your plate. Life is a little busy. <laughs> you know, I've done this for four years, yeah. and I've loved it. And I think it's time to move on to other things. That's kind of my space now. And so do you have a successor in mind, somebody else that will be... Um, the, uh, we are going to have a meeting this Sunday night. Um, there is a person, Barbara Flanagan, and I believe that she is going to be, uh, you know, taking that over in that role. But we have a lot of people that will help. And what we need in the club are, uh, you know, as many people that are willing to participate or, you know, uh, co uh, be a co-leader of an event. Mm -hmm. Then the club can really move forward even better. You know, that's a good point. You mentioned the events and especially during the summer, the Tahoe Singles Connection, you host hikes and, and picnics right. and easy activities and a little more strenuous activities. Right. You, you really have something for everybody. Right. And this is, I, I'm saying this sort of out of my hat because I haven't done anything with the Tahoe Singles in, in years, but I still read the, the flyers and the newsletters mm -hmm. and see all of the activities that you're, that you're up to. So when people join, Ostensibly, they're joining because they're single and they want to meet other people. But there's also a benefit of being more active, being involved in other activities that they may not otherwise do. And as you say, you're looking for people that can help organize or coordinate those events. You know, what you're saying is so right because so many people have come to our events and they'd say, I would never do this. <laughs> But since it's here, I'm doing it. <laughs> and right. also the idea that um, I would be home today if there were an event. And now, uh, um, you know, n now I, I, I'm out with people. And funny enough, I was never a person that went to many singles events. <laughs> this is very funny. So you had to create your own singles events to invite everybody else. To. And what I learned is because I was the organizer, I went to all the events. And what I learned is that I had a good time every time. So the pressing question is, do you have a date with you to bring when five other couples are having a dinner? That's <laughs> <laughs> Four years later, I'm going to put you on the spot. On the spot. Well, you have at least 250 potential dates. <laughs> <laughs> My social life is fine. All right. <laughs> That's fair enough. Again, there's an upcoming event, Tahoe Singles, which is Sunday, April 14th. And tell us a little bit about that again so we can get it on the screen one more time. Uh, that's going to be a, a potluck, singles to mingle meeting. And a, um, it's going to be really nice. It's at the uh, North Tahoe Conference, Cent uh, Conference Center on, uh, on April 14th, Sunday evening, 5 to 9 p.m. And that's located right next to Jason's Restaurant. And if you'd like some information, please call 530-587-2242. You know, one more question on the Tahoe Singles. Do you have an age range that's appropriate here? Oh, this club is open to everyone, so that we don't have any parameters there. That having been said, I would say the majority that attend our events, let's say it starts mid-30s, mostly 40s, 50s, early 60s. That's right. kind of the, the way I've noticed the it range. to be. Yeah. Well, Linda, I, I wish you luck. You're, you're taking on a whole new... Yes, I am. Task, goal, profession, yeah. uh, heart calling, perhaps. I am. I, I love being a therapist, and um, and I'm planning on teaching voice in the community. Aha! Uh -huh. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm planning on putting together a musical comedy workshop and teach uh, teach uh, people that. Uh, are interested in learning singing. I've had a lot of people approach me, so I'll have time for that now. Well, that sort of meshes because th singing is in itself a, a form of therapy. I mean, I know I, I sing in my car, I sing in my shower, I won't sing where anybody else can hear me, but it's therapeutic. I imagine it's therapeutic for a number of people, and uh, I, I can see that as a natural extension of everything else that you're embarking yeah. on. And I wish you luck with that. Thank you so much. I wish so you luck much. with the therapy and then the singing. And you may see me at one of your singing lessons <laughs> to see if I can start singing in public. That would be fine. We've been talking with Linda Carell, uh, founder of the Tahoe Singles Connection. Linda, thank you so much for being on the show. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. We'll be back in just a minute with upcoming events, so stay tuned.
Welcome back to Diamond Peak, excuse me. Wear your most outrageous outfit. The more outrageous your outfit is, the bigger your discount is to ski. So again, that's Saturday, April 13th. Um, discounts proportional to the craziness of your outfit. Maybe instead of your skis, you should bring your camera. Uh, information, call 775-832-1177. April 13th is the Susie Bach Memorial Race at Squaw Valley, USA. This is a benefit for the Stanford Hospital Bone Marrow Transplant Unit and also the UC Davis Ski Team. Registration includes a lot. It includes an all-day ticket, racing, awards, and an evening banquet with live music. Uh, for information on the Susie Bach Memorial Race, call 587-7517. On Sunday, April 14th, the Truckee Donner Land Trust is hosting a ski day at Sugar Bowl. $20 tickets, you need to buy them in advance. You can buy them a number of places in town, including Dave's, Reporters. Uh, contact those outlets for tickets. You need to buy your ticket in advance. Again, that's skiing for the Truckee Donner Land Trust at Sugar Bowl on Sunday, April 14th. April 18th is Skier Snowboarder Appreciation Day at Donner Ski Ranch. Yeah, it's going to be the end of the, day, end of the year, end of the season for Donner Ski Ranch. So go have some fun. Say see you next year to Norm, Gary, and Steve and ride the last of the 2001-2002 season at the ranch. Information at the ranch, 426-3635. And a big event coming our way, I'll be mentioning this in the upcoming weeks, is the Tahoe Truckee Earth Day at North Star at Tahoe. This will be an all-day event, and it will feature educational and environmental booths, lots of activities for kids, arts and crafts, food, beverages, and special guests, mumbo gumbo, get out your dancing boots. All activities are free to the public, and for more information on Earth Day, call 584-1660. We'll be talking about that later. Uh, that's it for this week. I want to thank Linda Carell again for joining us on today's show. We'll see you next week on Trekkie Talks.